Hey guys, welcome to another hashtag Ask Jim at training. So we are here at the conference center and we have our prospects in if they do swing the camera around. So as always guys, we're gonna ask their questions. They're gonna come up to the mic and ask Jim a question. We also have some that were submitted via the Ask Jim website, which Jim's actually responded to the people directly. So via our website, Ask Jim, Jim has responded. And if you are watching online, drop a comment, g'day, do a share. Monopoly as well for the best question online. So let's get straight into it. I'm going to start off with one that came by the Ask Jim question box because I submitted this two weeks ago and you wrote a really good response to it. Now the question was from a guy called Beza. He said, hi guys, Jim, what is your advice to someone who has a well-paying job but the appeal of a franchise owned business is pretty strong? The income is quite significant and would be higher than having your own business uh, franchise but the lifestyle of running your own business is something that really interests you. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that here. Yeah. Um We've done a lot of studies on, on income. I was just talking about that at dinner before, actually. And generally speaking, the better your income in your previous job, the better the money you'll make as a franchisee. It's not universal, but generally people who come from like a background, sales, corporate, that kind of thing, tend to do very, very well and end up with you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, this kind of thing. Whereas somebody who's had a more normal job might, might make 80. But roughly speaking, equivalent. Look, if you talk to people about I would love to say that on the whole, people make a lot more money as franchisees as they, than they did as their job. In reality, if you allow for things, it's probably fairly similar. Um, the big difference is obviously things like the fact that you've got more time for your family, that you've got control of your own life and your future, and you, know, you haven't got a boss. I mean, that, that's what people say when they talk about why they like doing it. It's one of the things I do um, Every, every week actually, in fact tonight, usually on Monday night, is to ring up people who've been with us for 10, 15, 20, 25 years and hit their anniversaries and I ask them about being gyms compared to and that's what they typically say. I've been able to see my kids growing up. The only thing, so I say there's many, many advantages to being in business. I think there's one, I wouldn't say it's a disadvantage, but something you've got to be aware of and that's that it can be at times very discouraging. To be successful in business, you have to have a bit of intestinal fortitude. You have to be able to keep on going even when times are difficult. There can be ups and downs. Your income is not like this. It can go like that. But if you've got that kind of mental toughness, it's, it's, it's a brilliant option. And I'm certainly really, really pleased that I never, never got offered a job which I wanted <laughs> when I mm. first got my PhD and had to go into business for myself because it's a much better option. And the tax deductions as well. You can't do it as pay YG. And we've got Ta tax wise, you're a lot better off here, yeah, that's <laughs> for sure. And we've got 60 people tuning online, and one real quick comment from Paul Sanders says, Evening, gents, how do you keep finding new corners in the conference centre to film in? Still trying to work out where you are at the moment. So, we are, if you walk into the conference centre, we actually did a video of Jim off a tour, and you will see that. So, we're in the corner, the boys have done a great job mm -hmm. next to the fireplace. So, I've got one here from the audience now, which is from Monson. Is it Monson? Yeah. Monson? Yep. So, what's your question, mate? You've got two here. So, I've got the one about the migration question, which is really good. Yeah, I just sorry, sorry. 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 Monson's question here. We should have one of those throwable mics, you know, have that they toss around the place. Or Co whatever? COVID germs. Oh yes, yeah, COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. We get in trouble. Yeah, that's all we got that set up. Uh, hello, James. Uh, actually, it was nice to be in this uh, training session. And uh, the first question is uh, for someone who just migrated to Australia. How Jim's franchise could be a good platform to start a business? A great question. Well, it's a, it's a great platform. In actual fact, it's, we are very appreciative of the immigration program because it, it drives our growth, to be quite honest. Look, it's a great thing. People who come to Australia often have, you know, advanced degrees and all kinds of things which, and, which they can't use in this country. Yeah. And, and language is a bit of a, if you're going for a high level job, language is a bit of a problem. But in your own business, all people care about is the service that you do. Okay. So if your English is reasonably good, it's a very, very good option, a way to get started because you don't have to rely on anybody else. As long as you do look after your customers, which anybody can do, as long as your English is basically okay, you can do as well as anybody. It's a great first step. Okay. And you have another question as well. Yeah. The, have you got any, any franchise who started his, his business or his or her business without any money or experience with uh, Jim's group and he or she succeeds? Well, that's most of them. <laughs> I mean, most people borrow the money to buy a franchise and very, very, very few have any experience of that particular business in the past. In fact, as I was talking about before with somebody, it's not even a, a benefit particularly to be, if you wanted to be a, a 
mowing contractor, for example, having been a, a council gardener for 20 years isn't really much of a benefit. But having been in something like sales or, or corporate management or something, that would be a fantastic benefit. It's not so much the experience of the job, it's, it's knowing how to run a business. Yeah, that's it's, right. it's, it's having the attitude. And we teach you. And what a lot of people do too is they have a franchise as their first business. Yeah. Like Andrew McIntosh, one of my first franchisees, he actually bought a lawn mowing run off me and then became a franchisee when I started back in 89. Um, was a fr successful franchisee, became a franchisor, started the fencing division. Um, he's now multi-millionaire. He owns several nurseries. He's got a construction business. He's got all kinds of things. He's just done really, really well. But the, the gardening industry, the mowing, was where he got started in business. Oh, okay. So it's, it's a good stepping stone. And a lot of our people have gone on to do major business within gyms and some major businesses outside gyms. Yeah, because my qualification from overseas is not recognized by Australia, so I have to start from somewhere. That's why I'm asking these questions from you. Yeah, but you see, you've got the ability and the, and the, and the brains and the, and the fortitude to get that qualification, yeah. which is what our immigration system does actually achieve. Just because your skills may not be recognized here, but it shows you a certain quality of person. Yeah. And you're exactly the sort of person that would do well in an organization like in a system like this, where we'll give you the basic start and give you training and help and support, yeah. but your own natural ability can take you as far as you want to go. Look, and there's plenty of people in gyms who started off with nothing who are now multi-millionaires. No, there's people who've got incomes of more than a million dollars a year net who that's started that's off where you're starting off. Good it's only up to you. <laughs> that's, you're encouraging me now. <laughs> that's very <laughs> nice. <laughs> and if you want to talk to me any time, if you've got ambitions and you feel like you'd li you like some ideas, just, just give me a call or email me and just ask me. I, like, I love doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's why I came to Merrill to see you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the first well, you've got my phone number, you've got my email address, haven't you? <laughs> sure, yeah. Okay. Use it. <laughs> yeah, I will. I love, to I love to hear from people who've got ambition. And I will talk to you about possibility. I say, hey, there's a new division. That's, would you be interested in, in getting involved in that? Or, you know, what about putting on workers? Why don't you go and speak to so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so who've done this? Or, yeah. you know, perhaps a regional franchise or, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do. What's the next step up? Yeah, we we want to keep you growing. <laughs> Yeah, just be careful if uh, it's me. <laughs> well, you, you know something, if I, people have asked me to act as a business coach and advisor, yeah. and I say my rate is a thousand bucks an hour, and I'm worth that, because I'm yeah. one of the most successful businesses in Australia. You get it for nothing, it's all free. It's all, well, it's not for nothing, you pay your fees, but <laughs> <laughs> it's included. Exactly. Isn't, isn't that an amazing privilege? Yeah, that's right. Thank you so much. Great Thank you question. Thank, Thank you very much. So, we have a few comments and questions coming online. Let's so just get through them real quickly for Jim. So, Jason Pollock's got apologies for not watching the lives lately. I've become addicted to TikTok. I came, he's a franchisor in Phuket. I came across the Jim's group and feel as though Jim should do more personal TikToks or business duets. Thoughts? So I'm going to ask you first. Do you know what TikTok is, Jim? Have you ever used it? No idea. <laughs> we do have Jim's group TikTok and we're going all right with it at the moment. So, we are putting some Jim content on there, Jason. So, let me know some ideas and we're happy to do it. The Navy Kitchen has gone one for you, Jim. Hi, guys. I'm looking but at Hang on. What is a personal TikTok? Explain to me. So, TikTok's <laughs> like a, it's an app with 15 seconds to 60 seconds and people dance and just do like little clips of advice and stuff. They want me dancing? No, no. I don't, I don't think he wants dancing. He said business, business duets or personal TikToks. So maybe a personal message or something, maybe a fun fact or something from Jim. Maybe we could do that for that platform. Yeah. It's getting a bit of attraction, though. We've had, you know, we had a video a few with opening that up, actually. It's called Fun, what are they called? Fun Pops or something? Okay. You're not supposed to wreck the box, but you grabbed it straight away and you ripped the box open. And I posted this online and all the people who clicked them went off of you. And it's got like 70,000 views. <laughs> if you rip this box open, don't, don't wreck it. You've just destroyed the value, all that sort of stuff. So that's the platform for TikTok. And then Amy Kitchen... Yeah, that's amazing. They, buy the, they get these Monopoly sets. The, the clickers do it. They don't open them. They don't play with them. We've played this game. It's a very fun version of Monopoly. It's much better than the old traditional version. But Correct. Well, when this first came out, the actual world record holder for no Monopoly found out about it. I don't know, before even we knew about it, it had six copies and signed and... You sign them and they're just in your shelf sitting there. So mm. it's quite interesting with the collectors. Now, one here, a question for you, Jim, we'll real quickly. Amy Kitchener. Hi, guys. I'm looking at becoming a franchisee in grooming for dog wash. Is there a set location you need to work for and do you choose your own fees, times and organise customers from Amy online? No, no, it's, it's mobile. It's completely mobile. You just go out there and as far as choosing your customers, what will happen is that you, you put yourself down. For, first of all, you get trained, which is, which is part of our mobile system. You get trained in the field. But then you actually just say, these are the suburbs I want to work in. This, this is the jobs I'm comfortable with. You might not start with grooming, for example. You might just do washing. Um, and then you, and you, and you just wait for the leads to come through. And, and you typically start off working over a wider area. And then as you get busier and busier with regular clients, which is what typically happens in a division like dog wash, you, you, you shrink and you take more and more close to home. So you, you travel less and less, which is the idea. 
It'll be very busy in dog wash. Yes. Now we've got one here from the audience, which will be from Ian. G'day, Ian, from Signs, Prints and Uniform. Yes, is this a good question, Ian? Uh, so this is more of a, um, a franchise or question for you. Yeah. Uh, we're finding that how do you handle prospects that want to um, that like the business and would like to you know, buy it? However, a barrier to entry is that they want to use their own car, late model SUV or whatever vehicle that they have, as opposed to buying the approved van that's been suggested to them. How do you handle that? that um, um, these are divisional decisions, which is really up to you because you run the division. So you can make these decisions for yourself. Personally, I'm pretty open about sort of things. I don't think everybody needs to look exactly the same. I know some people say you've got to have this particular vehicle, this, but I don't really care. As long as it's properly signed. I mean, you obviously, you would need a certain kind of a van or something to carry your samples around, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I but suppose the larger footprint SUVs could handle similar type of volume, I have no doubt. It's really up to you. I don't, yeah. think, I don't think there should be a need for total uniformity. I think a lot of what we do is based on, on what's best for the franchisee working in the field. As long as it's properly signed in some way, and you can get these um, wrapping things these days, which is really, really good. You can wrap anything, make it look very impressive. I don't think it matters. I, I would suggest to you as the divisionals that you take a more liberal attitude rather than saying, hey, you've got a perfectly good vehicle, but you have to go and buy this one. That just adds to the cost to get in. Yeah, right. Some divisions have changed their thoughts. Yeah. Cleaning group, for example. Remember cleaning group? They used to be all white, but then they opened yeah. it up to be more. It's a good example. Well, look, look, a lot of the decisions within gyms are made by divisions rather than us yeah. at National. Yeah. So we don't directly get involved. But my advice is always to be quite lenient on such things, really. Yeah. In mowing, we certainly don't insist on things. I know the VIP always used to say had a white car. Mm. I've never bothered with it. Just have a decent looking trailer, properly signed. That's it. Thanks for that question, Ian. One online real quickly, comment, Andrew Wick saying, good evening, gentlemen, I'm booked in for next month's training, can't wait to come. So good to see that, Andrew. Okay, and we've got one here as well from the audience, which will be from Ben. Now, Ben's got a couple of questions. Where are you, Ben? Do you, re do you remember him? Yeah, this you a good, him? good bunch, they <laughs> more than one question at a time. Uh, That's just good. Two. Two. Just two. Got the two. Uh, hi, Jim, how you going? Ben? Uh, so the first one is, uh, at what moment did you realise the potential for what you had created for it to go exponential? <laughs> well, no, no, not at one particular moment. I just, I just always underestimated what, where I'd get to. Um, when I started off mowing lawns back in 1982, I just thought this is something I'll do temporarily until I can find something worthwhile. And I tried other businesses like a computer shop and all kinds of things, and none of them worked in this mowing business just puddled along in the background. I never thought it had the potential. And then VIP came in and, and, and they, they terrified me, so I thought I had to franchise in self-defense. But then somebody asked me when I first started, how many would you expect to have? And I said, if it's really successful, maybe a hundred. Well, you've definitely eclipsed that. Well, and then during that first year, I just developed a system which I thought would be appealing to franchisees. That was my idea. And by the end of the first year, I had like about 60 or 70, and I thought, wow, this is amazing. But even then, you know, I, I came close to selling out in the first couple of years. I just didn't see the potential. I really didn't. So it took me a long time to figure out that, hey, this thing's really got some legs to it. And it surprises me how far we can go, actually. I really do. Yeah. Never had numerical targets. Always targets in terms of customer service or franchisee satisfaction. That's what we measure. And the, if, you do the, if you focus on the basics, on, on the service, the numbers tend to come. If you focus too much on the numbers and the money, then other things don't work. It doesn't work out as well, in my experience. Yeah. Awesome. Thank mm. you. What about your second one, Ben? Second one? Yeah. Do you recommend getting a beard in order to increase <laughs> revenue? <laughs> Do you recommend getting a beard to increase revenue? I think so too. Mm. I think it, actually, I mean, trying to put this forward, I think beards should be compulsory. And I know <laughs> a lot of people are complaining, especially the women, about this, but I think this is something that we really should have a uniform look in gym. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody should change their name to Jim by deed poll. <laughs> What happened to your bushy beard is the question. Ah, well, yes. You think there's some business behind it. You know what happened? You know why I grew a beard in the first place? Because back in 1982, I was, um, uh, had a fiancé who liked beards. So I thought, to keep her happy, I'll grow a beard. And then in something like 21 years ago, I found myself single, l like most men, not of my own choice. And my beard was going a bit grey. And I thought, in my late 40s, if I'm going to find someone 
I don't need to look any older than I am. So <laughs> off it came. Okay. <laughs> Completely about women. <laughs> As all of us, isn't that right? <laughs> we are ruled by women. Got da- well, I've got one from David McDonald line says, a beard will make you at least double the money. I can vouch for that. So David's a franchisee and tenant's doing really well. So he is too. maybe grow the beard as He's well. He's very famous for, I had a problem with our, um, with our remote TV here. Mm. And David came in. We'd been puzzling about this for months. We bought all kinds of extra equipment and all kinds of things. And David just walked into the room, had a look at it, went <laughs> like that, and it fixed it. <laughs> yeah, seven seconds. Like, Why didn't yeah. I call Jim's antennas in the past? <laughs> So we have a few more coming online. So get your comments and questions online. We'll probably get to them if you put them in there. So Ben holder has gone, are you planning on doing any other Jim's board games? Maybe Jim's Chess. Because I know you're a big chess fan. That's an idea, actually. Jim's Chess. You could get a custom set, mate. It wouldn't be, wouldn't be like you have to order 1,500 minimum quantity for that with the license. You could probably do... Yeah. It's mm. a bad idea. I mean, what, what would you put then? I suppose you could have different kinds of divisions with... with um, what do you reckon? Well, you'd have to be the king. The little, the little head on the king. Well, it could be it could be the gym with the with the the beard with yeah. the beard. Yeah, that'd be the king. And you and you want the different divisions to have different things like like. Well, who's going to be the rook? Who's the old workhorse rook? A lot of leeway to go either way. I don't know. What do you reckon? You'd have to make it look like a chess game because it's it's actually confusing otherwise. Surely mowing's the pawns. <laughs> mowing, mowing would have to be the pawns. Well, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to get creative with that one. We'll put that out there. That's I've a good got a question, Lord of the ben. Rings. I like chess, actually. You always have a game out there afterwards. I'll be happy to have a game with you. I've got a, we've got a, we've got in the in the IT problem. We've got a Lord of the Rings with with the angels and and the demons and stuff. It's quite fun. They got a chess offer for everyone. But have a think about that one. And we have one from Kyle Shim. It's a good question. I know you have updated your uh, every customer fan book multiple times over the years. When are you planning on doing a new edition? I don't know. Most people run out of the old one. <laughs> <laughs> True. It's a very good question, though. So that one there, Jim, uh, every customer and fan, which most people would have. Yeah, that's what tends to happen. We, mm. we, actually, we actually get to the stage where we, because we buy fairly big quantities, because we basically get the down to a couple of bucks a book, because we give a lot of them away. Um, so, yeah, when we, when we start to run out, then I, and I update it and just put some more stuff in, and we do that. I must be about eight different editions over the years, I think. I think it's every couple of years, three or something years, it's always been around. Yeah, it is a bit, take out some things. True, true. <laughs> you could actually, if, yeah. you, if, you got a, if you got a, um, a copy, of the old copies, you'd actually see some, some changes. Like at one time I might have talked about how great our trade exchange was, but that was a total disaster. So that gets... <laughs> that's deleted of, out there, just the history's deleted. <laughs> pushed aside, yeah, it's not it. so important. Now, Paul Sanders has got a comment before, so real quickly, 100 at the start would have seemed like a great goal. We now have 4,000. It's 4,200. How long before we could have 5,000, despite you saying you don't like numerical targets? Question from Paul online from Paul Sanders. Oh, the rate we're going, it'll take us a couple of years, I guess. It depends. Mm. I mean, COVID's been really good to us. I mean, it's, it's not, I don't mean it. It's been horrible for Australia in general, and, and I feel really, really bad for my franchisees, especially those who are caught in Victoria and um, lockdown and so forth, the, the, and the pain that caused. But you have to be honest; it's been it, it's been great because we've got a, so much work in an economy where so many people are looking for work, mm. and so what what we've found is that people are joining us in large numbers, but also they're not leaving because we've got an income. Well, 2020 was 240,000 unserviced leads and I yeah. think the year before it was like 190 or whatever. It's it was. like about one in three unserviced, yeah. which, is the, which is the most extreme we've ever had, despite the fact that we're actually growing at a record rate. Um, mm. it's, it's, we're just so busy. The, our biggest challenge is always just, just how do we find more franchisees? It, it's, it's the, the work just, the demand for work just keeps on rising. And actually, in fact, when we get Jim's jobs going properly and most franchisees start using it, which is probably going to be within another, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll see there's so many features in that that will really reduce complaints the in so many different ways. And when that happens and our service go, goes up, I think the, the, the volume of leads is going to go through the, through the roof. It's not a work problem, it's a franchisee problem, isn't it? Mm. For the most recent time. So that goes into this question here from Michael. So where's Michael? This relates to leads. It's a very, very good question, this one. Okay. How does Jim's Plus sit with the franchisors and franchisees? It it causes some disquiet at times because we are taking leads that their advertising pays for and giving them to our competitors at one level. Um, At the other level, there's, there's, to my mind, there's some great positives. First of all, when you knock back that many leads, it's very bad for for your customer reputation. 
I mean, people get very upset and annoyed. And it's a very common principle, standard principle in, like if you run a shop and somebody comes in and says, do you have this and you haven't got it? What does a shopkeeper do who knows what they're doing? They say, look, I'm sorry, I haven't got it. But if you go down the road to this shop over there, they'll have it for you. In other words, you give them an assistance. That is good business practice because they're more likely to come back to you next time. So it looks after our clients better. We make money from it and we're already making substantial money. And what are you going to be using this money for? Every cent that we make a profit will go back to advertising to find more work for our franchisees and to find more work, more um, franchisees for our franchisors. So we're going to use it to boost Jim's group. And the other advantage is too, and it happened just one today, where somebody who's been taking jobs from Jim's Plus has now come across, I want to join Jim's. Because the lead fees are a lot cheaper with us now. And there's a lot more of them. So they recognise the value. So I think it's a great idea. I think it'll really, really help Jim's to succeed and become better and better and better. At the same time, I know it does upset certain people. But one of the things about me that I'm, if I have a vision, I will stick to it and keep on driving it because I, I believe in the long run it will be really, really good for our people. Excellent. Good question, Michael. Thank Great you. question. We've got a few more online here. So Sean Day is going to have only just tuned in. Is that a Jim's Monopoly? Absolutely. So you can get it online for 60 bucks there, bargain basement price. Okay, and we've got Eric Jurgens is going, good evening, gentlemen. Just thought I would share a quick story on how I pride myself on my memory, this is a short one. Yep, I've been able to remember that orders of over 80 of my customers and what coffees they like, and yet last Saturday I forgot to attend our daughter's 40th birthday party. <laughs> Jim, do you find that this happens to you? <laughs> yeah. Interesting one. I don't remember anything. I've got a terrible memory of names and faces, which is very embarrassing for somebody in my kind of situation. I sort of vaguely recognise. Oh, you get a lot of, no, a lot of people, though. You get a lot of people you come across. I'll be pretty similar. Yeah, even at church, everybody knows me, and I don't know. <laughs> Even if I do recognise them, I can't remember their names, so it's, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, everybody has strengths and weaknesses, that's the point. They, they don't laugh. <laughs> ben? Everybody has strengths and weaknesses, and I've got, I've, got, I've, got, I've got some strengths. I've got this many strengths and this many weaknesses. <laughs> but, but the thing about it is, you focus on the things that you're good at, and you, and you work on that, and you don't, don't pretend to be good at everything. Because there's great people around me who can do things that I can't do. You know, including here. You know, what Joel does is not, not a job I could do. He just has certain kinds of skills. And Ben and Jake over there, I mean, I, I've never, I wouldn't know how to make a, a film. So everybody has an ability. And that's the great thing about what goes on in gyms too. You've got all kinds of different ideas and strengths and different people are good at different things. Haydar and Sharon are good at doing different things and I can learn from them and vice versa. So, and, and franchisees who've got ideas. You'd be amazed how many good ideas come about a franchisee, so I think. You change systems all the time, basically, don't you? Yeah. Change the manual. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're always changing things, you know. You know, a franchisee last year came up with the idea, they said that there was a franchisee who was um, stiffing the suppliers, and that was causing problems with supply. And he said it shouldn't be possible. Well, it's nothing against it. But, so what I said to them is, okay, what about a change for the manual? That means you have to pay your suppliers. So we actually did it. We put the referendum, the franchisees accepted it, it's now part of it, it's been an incredibly useful thing. That's because one franchise came up with that mm -hmm. idea. Absolutely. So. We've got a couple of comments online here, which is great. So I'll go to this one more from the audience, though, from Debbie. Where's Debbie? Debbie at the front there, cool. Um, joining the training today, I think it was a, quite an eye-opener to understand about the different divisions. I probably hadn't really looked into it a lot. Um, and from that, was there a particular division that started that you were really surprised that it took off really quickly with success? Um, huh, well, I don't really know. You, if, asking me to predict which division would work the best, would, I, would, I would have a very poor idea. Some divisions that I love very much, like personal training, for example, has really never got off the ground at all. Yet test and tag. I mean, I've never even heard of there was such a thing as a test and tag business until somebody came to me and they said, hey, you know, we're full time working just in Albury Wodonga. And I thought, wow, you know, you could have 50 of these across the country. There's now nearly 200. Um, building inspections. You know, that was Paul Comerford. Just, he came to me with this concept. I didn't know how well it was going to work. We've now, it's one of our most successful divisions. Like it's got about 100 and, what is it 130, 140. 130, it's the yeah, biggest in the country. Yeah. And it's just yeah. a few years later. So, and yet other ones that, you know, you'd think it'd be fantastic like Handyman. We've only got about 
60, 63. 60, yeah, and you'd think that would be gigantic. So how can you tell? But you know, you know the difference though? It's got almost nothing to do with the nature of the job. It's got everything to do with the leadership, the person who leads it. Cleaning was never a particularly good division. It really wasn't. It was an embarrassment in a sense because mowing was so big and cleaning was just puddling around doing nothing. And then Haydar took over the division and he wasn't obviously the person in the beginning. It was actually with somebody else. And he started to build it. And then he got into trouble with his marriage and the whole division went flat for a couple of years. And then he got really married, lovely wife, and just shot up again. All, it's all to do with the people running it. You know, and you never know. Somebody watching today might be the one who takes on a new division or takes on existing division and just causes it to boom. It's all the quality of the individual. That's a great question. How many, how many franchises so do you have, Sam? You're from Building Inspection, front row. What, 130, 140? Yeah, I think it's has I think yeah. about 133 or so. 133, yeah. And, and NZ is, if NZ you ask me to guess when th that started, how successful that would be, whether it be one of our, you know, what, one of our top seven or eight divisions, I, I wouldn't have predicted it. We have a big thing these days. We have the, the placards in the... In the um You've got three new ones to put up, yeah. Yes. So when you hit 50, you get one. When you hit 100, you get two. When you get 200, you get three. So that's, that's a big game for you guys next, isn't it? To get to, get to that, uh, to get third, the third placard on the wall. Well, you're on the Monopoly board, and that's the main thing. So I was oh, just yeah, yeah, you're on that one, so it's the main thing. Yeah, you should. It's you all careful. Look out. Get a copy if you look at the actual the divisions, they're all the biggest ones. So that, the, the, the bigger they are, the, 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 the more they get. So that, that's a historical record. Mm. That's a good question. Thanks for that. Yeah. I've got one here from a deal online, real quickly. Hi, Jim. Is Monopoly your favourite game? A deal from Jim's IT in Werribee. It's a Jim's IT franchisee. Nah, <laughs> sorry. It's not, is it? Can you explain Monopoly. why? We had quite fun playing it, actually. It was, it was, it was, and we did the video of it. We did, yeah. It, it was it, good to see you not win for once in those sort of games and stuff. I think that was, that was, it was very ironical actually, because yeah. I had all these great, I had all these great monopolies, I had, I had test and tag, I had dog wash, and I had, um, what was it, pest control, which is a cool little, and then, and then I actually got stuck with a, with a, what was it, a, a, a van on, on, on rubbish Jimmy's removal. rubbish removal, yeah. and it got wiped up, I thought it was very ironical to get wiped up on rubbish removal, but Absolutely. It was, it's really quite fun, but actually I like other games, I like chess, or actually there's a version of chess called 960, where you, Quasi random in the back row. That's really fun. But this is really cool to get though, because your your divisions on you have chess ca uh, community cards and stuff, which you wrote, which people don't realise. But you actually wrote the yeah, cards. Yeah, I, and I stuff wrote. Like that. I designed the whole board. Actually, mm -hmm. they they changed a few things. Cleaning actually took on the stations. What used to be the stations. I did, yes. But that was basically my design. Then we got one from her fam online as well. It's gone. I hear, I hear a rumor that Jim's Poo Patrol is close to starting up, and wanted to know if you have any franchisees joined up yet, and are they taking bookings yet? Nah, we've done a trial of Poo Patrol. There's two at training. There's two in training, are there? Two Poop Patrols in training. Wow. It's on the sheet. I don't know whether they're still there, but they were doing it online. Okay, online. It was on, it was on the sheet. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, it, we did a trial with um, Ben. That's Sharon, Sharon Connell's husband. Um, and it, it got a very good response. It's, it's, a, it's a surprisingly good earner. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely system they've got where you actually have this thing and, they, and you don't touch anything. It goes into a plastic bag which drops in the rubbish. So it's very sanitary and you have this enzyme thing to spray on it to get rid of the mess. It's a, it's a great division actually. I think it's going to be a corker because it's actually a division that's very cheap to get into, very little equipment. It doesn't take a lot of physical effort, could be really done part time. It would suit very well someone like a woman who was a dog lover um, and didn't want anything too physical. Um, I think it's going to be great actually. I think the logo is going to go viral. The old, the old poo emoji next to the gym. Yeah, I like that one too. <laughs> Have you seen the logo? It's got a, it's got a pile of poo with, with a sort of yeah. thing running out it's of like it. It's like the little emoji, so that's going to definitely go viral for that yeah, one. Yeah, Sharon was talking about doing Jim's pet service. I said, mm. don't be such a wanker. <laughs> I didn't quite use that term. I know, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but yeah. you put the poo front and centre, because that's what's going to get people interested. But you know what, you think it's a bit of a joke, but it's not really. You talk to mowing franchisees and they obviously hate it and stuff like that, so there's a lot of demand for it and they can make a good early rate. I've never understood why yeah. mowing franchisees get so uptight about poo. I mean, I really do. When I used to do it, I sometimes, I remember there was a place where I used to mow the lawns and I used to do brush cut the, um, because they could, part of it was too rough and I used to brush cut an area where the dog used to go to the toilet and I come home brown. It didn't really worry me that much. I just had a shower afterwards. What that big deal <laughs> <laughs> we'll but really, on. I mean, yeah. if, you, if you're worried about the poo, you just charge an extra five bucks to pick it up and throw it in the well, garden. Well, that's the keys to charging to it, isn't it? You make a bit more extra money the whole year if you do that. Well, if you one. think about it, okay, if you're charging, if it takes you two minutes and you charge five bucks, what's that the equivalent of 150 bucks an hour? I mean, it's not too bad. It's not hard work. You don't have to touch it. You just 
with a shovel. <laughs> What's so big deal? And the other couple of divisions that are starting is gyms, jumping castles, and I think there's laundry services as well, which is starting March 1. Is it really? Yes, yep. They're the other two divisions as well. Yes. So we've got three divisions. We'll keep going here with some questions on here. Then Simone's going to you, Jim, can you write another book, please? I want to hear your thoughts on where to now with the current world from Simone online. I think she's read biohistory. I would take it from that question. Biohistory would mm. give you the best option is my view of what's happening to the world right now. The only thing, if I was writing it again, I'd probably be more optimistic because my research program, what we're looking at, just for those who don't know, um, biohistory is a study of society which suggests that our civilization is in a fairly rapid state of decline in a similar reason as to what happened to the Roman Empire. You know, it's, it's to do with wealth and urbanization. And we're looking at the, the biochemistry and the epigenetics behind this kind of thing. But we've got some results from our research program, which is being run at La Trobe right now. Um, I've got some gr great research team developing a whole series of different ways that we can, we can meet this thing. Looking at, looking at um, proteins, looking at microbes, looking at epigenetics, looking at pheromones, looking at the whole, the whole range of things to try and reverse this process. So I'm, I'm actually quite optimistic that we will be able to halt the decline of civilization. Now there's, four, um, there's four videos on YouTube which I would watch if you want to yeah. understand it that have done pretty well some explainers. So type in biohistory in YouTube and they'll come up. Yep. They'll explain it really well. Is there ever some more questions for Jim in person here at all that you can think of on the top of your head? You got one here? Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, that's the mic. Go for it. This one's not written down, so I don't know what this is. It's all right. Go for it. Hey, Jim. It's Greg. Um, just curious as to your succession plan down the line. Um. The, the family trust is the family trust that owns the um, basically Jim's group as well as Jim's properties and virtually everything else I own. My own will is pretty trivial. Um, if I something happened to me, there's a um, a committee would take over, which is my wife, who's heavily involved in the business, my daughter Jasmine, who's a very capable um, young lady, um, my son Andrew. And um, who's, a, who's in charge of the neuroscience project, basically. And uh, another son of mine called James, who's a, a lawyer and doing quite well. So that, that's what would happen. There'd be a, a, a four-way. The actual ownership of the business would become to the foundation. So basically, apart from providing some basic help to my kids to find, buy houses and stuff, it all goes towards scientific research. But the session plan is there. Jim's is a very strong business. And... Um, I think it's most likely going to continue as a family concern because I've got, I'm, I'm very fortunate in having a couple of my children very, very capable. When you have 10 kids, the good <laughs> thing about that is you've got something to choose from. <laughs> and who knows about the younger ones anyway? They haven't really got to that stage yet. So um, yeah. I'm, I'm very optimistic. I'm, I'm optimistic too that I'm going to live in my, um, in um, looking at all the different things about lifespan. I'm 69, turning 69 in a few months this year. Um, I've probably got another 20 years of fairly healthy life. So I, I expect it'll be a long, long time to come before I'm ever going to think about succession plan. And I'm very, very healthy. Yeah, because I, I certainly get the sense that the success of gyms has a large part to do with your dynamic involvement in it day to day and your energy and your enthusiasm that you, yes. you, you maintain in it. I would hate to see gyms become a public company focusing on the next quarter's earnings. I think they would lose everything. Yeah. And what you see happening with people like Retail Food Group is, is, is appalling. You find some fairly good brands who were just butchered by, by people who went in and said money, 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 and they screwed the franchisees and basically destroyed all these iconic brands. Mm -hmm. They just wiped them out. It's absolutely shocking what's happening. And that's what happens when you, when you think financially rather than you think in terms of service. I think the idea that a company only exists to serve shareholders is an abomination and abortion. It really is. A, a, a business serves everybody. It serves the stakeholders, it serves customers, it serves employees. In our sense, obviously, it serves franchisees and franchisors. The owners is just one element of that. And I would hope that there's enough of the right kind of ethics in my family. Um, my daughter, my wife and my daughter, um, both very strong Christians, they both share the same kinds of values. So I'm, I'm optimistic that it will continue. And apart from the fact, too, if they make some um, breakthroughs in anti-aging technology, <laughs> I might live forever anyway. No, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, I, I just want to add, having come from the construction sector and been involved in many, many contracts over the years, having read the franchisee contract for the first time the other night, 
It was an absolute breath of fresh air. Thank you. A, a very fair and equitable document. Um, and yeah, the, when I heard this morning that that's been there from the outset, just a real hats off to you and, and what you what you did back then and have held firm to. Yes, and, and, and this is the striking thing is that it actually tends to be more that way with time. We've actually tended to give more rights to franchisees and franchisors over the years. Some of them I didn't mention, like the advisory committee. Mm -hmm. It actually does things like, which is elected by franchisors, which actually makes a lot of very key decisions, like things like uh, the branding fund is all controlled by the advisory committee rather than by us as national. There's a lots, of, lots of checks and balances within gyms which, which deliberately empower franchisees and franchisors. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. We've never had a compliment for you on the contract, and that's obviously, you've developed that yourself, so mm. a, lot of, a lot of people aren't aware of. Yeah. Thanks for that. That's a really Thanks. good one. Thank you. So we have a lot of comments and questions coming online. I'm going to get, try and get through a lot of them now. So Wagdy's gone. He loved the beard story, which is fantastic. We've got Dave McDonald says, Jim, I tried Jim's jobs and could not sell items. Can we add an inventory manage management system because antennas and security often sell per hour and per part? Uh, send me an email as to what you want. There's, we've got um, three separate teams, including uh, Australians and people overseas, working on different aspects, and I'm sure it's going to come in. But just give us an idea, send me, and I'll pass it on to IT, exactly what you would like to see in it. Because mm -hmm. that's what's happening right now. We're getting suggestions all the time of how we can improve it. Mind you, not just to, not just to make it do extra things, but make it easier to use, because ease of use is really front of mind. It's got to be something that you can pick up, that you can use just like an Apple calendar. It's so obvious you never have to be trained. Nobody ever showed me how to use an Apple calendar. And I'm not that good on technology, so it's got to be really simple. But yeah, sure, we, we, we intend to do all that kind of stuff with time as to when. The mobile app is brilliant, though. It's equivalent to, so I know David's a big service mate, I think, user or trade, trade file user, so it's pretty, it's better than I think service mate, the, um, the new mobile app when it comes out. Yeah. Look, when it, when it started off, it was relatively um, primitive. It probably didn't have a lot of the features. It's mm. developing more and more as time goes by. And by the end of this year, it's going to be a really amazing program with the stuff that's going in. It'll be so... We look at all the things that go wrong in the business. So how can we get around it? How can we improve it? This thing I was talking about this morning, which is this business of booking jobs in directly into your diary. Well, all you've got to do is to say, I've got this much time available to give quotes. And... It'll work out where you are and how far away you are. So it won't give you a quote. If you've only got half an hour, it won't give you a quote which is half an hour away because there's no point. But if, it, if there's one where you're only five minutes from another job, it'll book you in at that time. It'll send you a message, but then you, the appointment's already there. And that kind of thing could make a massive difference. Mm. And we've got a few more questions here, which came by the Ask Jim question box. Now, one real quickly from Bella. I think it's a young person. Do you do every single job like every single call you get, do you do it? Is the, is the comment <laughs> from someone online, from Lucy? Well, no, that, that, that two out of three. I wish, we, I wish we had enough franchisees to do every job. Though, then again, I like my franchisees to be so busy they're knocking back work. It's not a bad situation to be in. So but we knock back too many jobs, unfortunately, Lucy. Um, we, we'd love to do more. I get people actually email me. They get so exasperated. They say, Jim, don't you understand anything about customer service? I mean, you're a total idiot. I mean, this is the kind of thing I get sometimes emailed to me. P people want service done. Why do you knock back business? Mm. Why don't you take it? I want my fence done. I want you guys to do it. Why don't you have some elementary business sense and do it? So I just have to write back and say, look, we'd love to, but we can't do it without, just without compromising our standards. Yes, I could get jobs taken by anybody, but then you give lousy service. Mm. So, yeah. David McDonald's got online. Since when could you change your star rating start date? Can we get an email on changes made on the system? I read everything and I did not see this. Yeah, it'll, be, it'll be done in the next couple of weeks. What, what it means is that you can go back um, and you can... Because what a lot of franchises do have done better in recent times. And also the system's changed a bit to actually allow you to challenge complaints more easily and, and, and poor surveys. So what we're going to say, within a couple of weeks, there'll be a system in place where you can choose a certain date and you just delete every survey b before that. Because we don't really care what you did three years ago. We only care about what you're doing now. Mm. We've got one here from Jason Pox saying, Dead Set Jim's Poo Patrol, absolutely, Jason. It's starting two people online as well from it. Then Le Levi, he's gone here. Hi, Jim, how are you? Please tell me about car washing franchise a little bit, please. Car detailing, can you tell them about the car detailing franchise? 
Well, it's doing well. It's actually just hit 100. It's got its plaque. It has actually, yes. It's got its plaque up there, which is good. So it's a, it's a fast growing division. Um, look, like with anything else, uh, I was speaking to someone who was, is the guy I was speaking to in car cleaning. Is he here today? Yeah, there was somebody I was speaking to in car cleaning and he was just really excited to get going. And I said, you, you really, you love cars? He said, oh, I love cars. And I said, well, that's, that's, that's the business for you. Mm. So if you, if you enjoy cars, car detailing is a good thing. If you love gardening, well, mowing is a good thing. If you love construction, then fencing or something is a good division. So it's a matter of what you like doing. But uh, dog wash is for animal lovers, particularly dog lovers. So if, if, you love it, if you love cars, it's a great business. There's, there's plenty of work around. They tend to make good money. Mm. Um, a lot of regular client base. It's, it's, it's a nice division, but you've got to love what you do. That's the main thing. So we've got a few comments on here going, Pantomime's got him still waiting for Jim's fried chicken and they've done a logo. A lot of people like doing logos and yeah. like JFC and stuff like that. We have James Mitchell. In, in, all, in all seriousness, one thing I would say is we'll never go into fried chicken. The basic <laughs> reason is because those people are very good at what they do and we wouldn't want to compete with them. But also we're not very good at anything, but we, we're very good at service industries. Mm. Where somebody brings us or books online to get a job, to somebody to come out to them, that is the kind of thing we do exceptionally well. We've got a few questions here and James Mitchell's gone, he flick it over the fence, she'll be right regarding the poo patrol. We'll hope you don't do that. Amy Kitchen has gone, can you choose your own cost as a franchisee or is it a set amount? I presume that's in regards to jobs you do for someone. Yes, you can, you can you, you put your own charges on. And then we have Jason's gone, sorry I'm on my, my poo patrol topic still. My mind is racing on the model. Is Jim looking for franchisors in poo patrol? Are they looking for franchisors? Potentially, yes. Though, uh, yeah. though we intend to keep the Victorian region for ourselves. So Jason's up in central uh, New South Wales. Well, you have to talk to Sharon. I, I know she's looking at, at that area. She's, she's the one who started it. So he's, basically, he's saying poo and pool, poo and pools would go well together. He's a franchisor for um, pool care. Yeah, well, why not? There we go. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of the time, it's the increasing pattern these days that franchisors are actually buying. It, it doesn't pay for a franchisee to have more than one franchise in more than one division because on the whole they get as much work as they want in their same division. But it's an increasing pattern for franchisors to have more than one division. Mm. Like Paul King, who's a very successful mowing franchisor, has actually bought a cleaning re region in, in the same area. So that, that kind of thing is happening. I know Manny is um, building inspections. He's pest also control. got pest control now. He's taken over the division and doing very well, actually. Mm. And Denise Taylor's gone, how about Jim's home care, disability services and aged care? Yes, we're talking about that today actually with somebody. Um, the, the, the issue with home care is that your hourly rates aren't very good. Um, our, our bottom line is 60 bucks an hour. You've got to work out how to make $60 per hour of business. You cannot charge NDIS $60 per hour. So the only franchise I would consider is one that was basically a management organisational type franchise. Mm. So if somebody came to me and says, I've got a business model of a business where the person running it can make at least 60 bucks an hour by contracting out jobs, I'd be very interested to say, let's have a talk about it. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting, there's a lot of online platforms like Mabel and stuff who are doing that sort of thing now. That's one we get. Jim's Nannies is the other one. We get Jim's Babysitters, and they requested a bit. Well, the, the same, same thing. Under the, under the hourly rate. The, the hourly mm -hmm. rate's the issue. I, I, don't, I don't like a business where you can't make at least 60 bucks an hour. And then we've got Billy Higgins says, Jim, I just want to say, I really love your passion and cannot wait to get into the franchise from Belinda Higgins. That's a good one there. And we have one here from Fardy. So he says, why do, why do franchisees have to pay full amount for leads that you don't pick up from Fardy online? Um, yes, I was talking about that this morning. <laughs> it's, a, it's a common bone of contention. Mm. I mean, in other words, you don't mind paying the leader for the job that you get, but you don't want to pay for the one that you don't get. But you've got to consider what lead fees are for. And the whole purpose of a lead fee is to provide an incentive First of all, not to take leads that you don't want, but also to make sure if you do take a lead, you've got to chase it up and chase it and chase it until you get it because you paid money for it. And we found from experience that if, you don't, if we don't do that, a lot more customers get neglected. So the problem with only paying charging for the ones that you get is that you remove the whole point of the lead fee in the first place because there's no incentive. Because if you don't get the job, you simply don't pay for it. Mm. So it's all to do with customer service. And it's also to do with the fact that when you, when you do chase up leads, it also means that you get more benefit, more jobs actually, and more income coming out of the same number of leads. Um, so yes, um, a lot of people ask me the same question. 
And the basic reason is because the purpose of lead fees is to act as an incentive. And you have a discount built in though as well? There's a 15% there's yep. discount built in, so, so you, you don't expect you to get everything. In fact, we don't want you to get everything. Mm. But it's not going to change, not while I'm alive anyway. And we've got a comment on here from Brad Shee, says, dog wash for the wind changed my life and the gym's framework made it so easy. So Sharon Connell, thank you. My only regret is not making the change sooner, which, are, which you, we hear a lot. We do, many <laughs> times. <laughs> then there's one here from MH, which is a good, good comment here. Do you believe there is a long-term promising future for solar and energy franchise? From oh, MH Online. Yeah, yeah, of course. Absolutely. It's a, it's a huge thing. And what's happening all the time is that as the technology gets better and better, um, it's going to become more and more of a thing. I'm amazed that more people don't have it, actually. We're going to get solar done um, at home. We had, I had that on my farm, and it's fantastic. It'll pay for itself in about three years, the way it's going. We're going to get it done at our place, and we're going to get done here. I want to be completely carbon neutral. And it's actually, it, it's, it might sound idealistic, and, um, you know, we'll certainly boast about it, but, but the fact of the matter is it's actually very good business. Mm. Solar is very, very good business because it pays for itself very quickly. When you can borrow money at 5% and your solar panels are returning about 30% in terms of reducing your electricity or getting your feed-in tariff, it's, it's a fantastically good deal. And, and they're getting better and better. Like, like they can operate now in more shaded environments where you couldn't put them in the past. I think there's like 20 franchisees in as well. There's a bit of franchisees in the division, isn't there, for energy? It's going well. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a good division. In, in fact, if you look at down the bottom of the uh, property down there, if you want to wander down anybody who's here, you'll actually see the solar panels were put on by Jim's Energy. Mm. They're all down there. You can see the little, little box ticking away, and, and you can see all the power going through mm -hmm. during the day. It's, it's a great system. So then Stephen O'Neill's going, hey guys, my first month complete, and I'm loving it. Thanks for all your support. Jim's mowing from Heathcote Junch Junchkin. So that's great to hear from Stephen. And Billy Higgins is going, I will email you, Jim, as I actually have a business plan that can generate work for disabilities. Mental health approach. I believe you support mental health research, question mark. From yes, I do. I do. The, the, the research that we're at, I'm actually funding, and this is the tune of yeah, probably a couple of million dollars a year, um, is... The basic idea comes from the study of things like collapsing empires and so forth and why they happen, but the actual implications are mostly in the short term for medical things, particularly in terms of areas like addictive behaviour, like uh, drug addiction, alcoholism, those kind of things. Um, but, you know, strong potential for the treatment of other elements like uh, depression and anxiety. So, yes, I, I, mental health is a terrible burden. We see, that we see the issues within gyms, actually. We see... Because we're sort of like, Jim's is like an extended family in a way, because even if you don't know somebody, you know somebody who knows them. So when somebody does something like commit suicide, which has happened in the past, it's very devastating. We had a, we had a terrible situation a couple of years back where a, one of our franchisees in WA um, went crazy, killed his three little girls and his wife. And it was, it was deeply shocking, very upsetting. I went across to speak to the... Um, you flew to Perth, yeah. I flew to Perth to speak to the franchisees there. And about half, more than half of the franchises in the state were there and we had this big room and everybody was really, really emotional and um, came up with a whole stack of different ideas about how to treat mental illness. And one of them was that the, we sent out a little fridge stig uh, stickers, uh, goes on fidgets with all the emergency numbers and stuff like Lifeline. We've, we've instituted mental health training for all of our franchisors. It's a compulsory part of franchisor training now. Um, one of the most interesting ideas that came up from that meeting is that somebody said, why don't we have a system of mentors where franchisees can volunteer without being paid just to help other franchisees who've got problems? And I sort of said at the time, who would, you know, who would be interested in doing such a thing because it would be such a burden? And most of the people in that room put up their hand because there was such a strong feeling about what had happened and we really felt hurt by, by this terrible what had gone on. And that list is available on Jim's Online for anyone to access. Yes, so. if you, anybody wants to talk to anybody at all about any issues that concern, don't want to talk to the franchise or there's another franchisee they can talk to who's volunteered to do this. And that's a wonderful initiative. Mm. So mental health is, I think, it's, it's a neglect. We don't pay enough attention to it. It's a big, big burden on individuals and on society. Mm. Now, Steve Wilson's gone here. Jim, what are your thoughts on the Facebook news ban? Think, uh, think, speaking of mental health, on the Facebook news ban, did you follow that much at all? Or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you think of it? I think, I think the tech giants, I don't think they offend people, but they've been ripping us off too long. Look, during the lockdown, the media 
particularly like um, Sky News and, 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 and News Corp were the only voices speaking out about what was going on, take holding the government to account. Having a free, independent media is so important to a society. When you have a dictatorship, what do they try and do? Like in Russia or somewhere like that, they try and shut down the media. So it's important that the media be paid for. And what's happened with the, all the advertising going online is that the media is being gutted of the, of the money that it needs to pay for the reporters to do the kind of investigative journalists we need. So it's absolutely vital. I'm totally in support of a well-funded media. So I think that what the government's doing is, is fantastic, taking on these tech giants. They've already got Google to agree, and I think we just keep on going with Facebook. I miss watching a lot of older people argue in the comment sections on news stories. That was my thing that I missed. That happens a lot there, Jim. You have a lot of big arguments and debates in the comment sections. And when your one went live, the first time you spoke out, that had probably 1,500 comments or something in the um, people just arguing about it. So Yeah, mm. but the media got that out. Yeah. The media got that out. Eh? We had a voice. We were speaking up for tens of thousands of Victorians who were really gutted by this dreadful ban that they put in for no good reason at all. They didn't even try and justify it. And the, the media was speaking up for us. So I am so supportive of what the government is doing. And I say, just hold on firm. And, and, and you know, if, if, if Facebook won't, won't come to the party, let, let's, let's work with another. There's other kinds of, of social media systems around. Let's transfer to those. And let's have, let's have our, our um, news media properly supported. We have a fan has got any. Will you have uh, batteries on the solar at National Office in Foothills? Yes. Yeah, so that's happening. Yeah, but batteries is the most expensive part, but we get frequent... How many, we get sort of half a dozen blackouts a year in this place? Uh, pro probably more, yeah. Because, yeah, because, there's, because there's so many trees around and yeah. the trees fall across the power lines and they knock them out. We were off about three days once. Mm. So yes, we want, we want battery power so that we can run, um, just completely switch over to batteries if something goes off. Absolutely. Then Kyle, in another comments. I'm going to read through these comments. We've got a few here from online, which is good. I think you can get $60 an hour for home care, at least from my knowledge, but does the gym's brand really lend itself to home care and nursing? From Kyle. It's a good comment. I think it does actually. We, the Jim's brand works particularly well in the domestic environment. Um, we do things like commercial cleaning, but cleaning is overwhelmingly domestic because what we think happens is that people, if you're in business, you tend to know, you, tend to know, you know contacts, you know who's good, you get recommendations and referrals. If you're a householder and you want something done, whether it's cleaning or gardening or home care or anything, people like a trusted brand. They, they, they feel confidence in us that we're not going to come in and rip them off or do something bad like that. Um, so I think it would work very well if we could work out a way of... of making the 60 dollars. Making yeah. the 60 bucks an hour minimum for it, yeah. Then mm. Tyson's gone, we own his gym is so good, we own a gym's mung. That's a good comment. And Tyson, then Billy West has gone, if you could breach any franchise or without reason, why would you pick Mike Davenport? That's a good question online. So anyone know what franchise or Mike's a franchise or he does the training? Well, that's assuming if we I can, this if one, I can we? breach... Well, first of all, I would never <laughs> breach a franchise law without reason, so that's a very strange question. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an interesting question. We'll have to move on with that one there. And then Michelle's going, you love hearing the feedback on dog wash. There's someone about to join after sitting on it for five and a half years. Wow. First inquiry was in August 2015. I must say, one, just going back to that comment, one of the things that I'm very careful of in gyms is to make sure that we can't breach people without reason. Hmm. That, that has to be very good reason. There's many defences of franchisors and franchisees. Um, it's, <laughs> it's ironic, actually. We've got a system called Jim's Plus where we actually send jobs out to independents. Um, if an independent gets a poor rating, like a, like a 3.8 or something like that, we will get rid of them very quickly. But you can't do that to a franchisee. You've got to give them warning after warning after letter after everything because that's the way our system works. Mm. So it's... Um, it's deliberately designed because from my point of view, even though, as the lawyers said, if I had all the power to do what I wanted to and get rid of anybody I wanted to, in a sense, that would be nice for me. But then again, why would you join a system where you've got no security? Mm. So, so it's deliberately, you deliberately tie your own hands. And that's, that's one reason I believe we've been so successful. It's a good point. We've got a couple of comments in relation to what you're saying before as well, which was Billy, he can say, I'm also up for volunteering as well. And Dave McDonald says, there are no antennas franchisees on the mentor list. Can I put my hand up to be a mentor or at least find out what's involved? That's from Dave McDonald. How's oh, he get really? involved? Yeah, yeah, sure. Then Dave McDonald says, the David, David yeah. send me an email, will you? Cool. And then he's got a comment with what you said before. He says, the media chose to put content on Facebook. It was a choice that they chose to use the platform. How much money has the media paid into boosting posts on Facebook over the years? That's a good point. 
Well, we use it a lot. We, we use we a lot. We spend a lot on Facebook we too. It's, we a, do. It's, a, yeah. it's a great advertising medium because you can you can target the sections you want. So the amount of data points they have on everyone is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we have um, Kyle Skellen's gone, Jim, if I asked you to advertise my business and, and then asked you to pay me for the pleasure, you would call me crazy. Yet you expect Facebook to do that now for News Corp. There's a comment there from Kyle. Well, it should be mutually beneficial because News Corp helps... Um, sorry. <laughs> you should turn your phone off before these, but it's all right. <laughs> yeah, News, News Corp um, gets benefit by having people go to, to News Corp, but also it benefits Facebook and Google as well because people go onto Google and then they, and they get a news story. So Google benefits as well because then they get the advertisements that are shown by, by showing it. Correct, yeah, when you click the news site, I you get the news. I think it should be fair both ways. I think the, 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 the tech giants do incredibly well. Mm. Then we have one here from Gary Hertog says, Hi Jim, I'd be very keen to register as a mentor as I've been through and survived my mental health battle. How do we all go about getting on board? So there's a lot of questions about Just the mental stuff. Just email me, jim at jims.net, yeah. and, I, and I'll, I'll put you through to the uh, relevant people. That's a great one there. And we've got one here as well, which is via the box during the week, which is a major laugh before. Owen oh, Frost, how did you get from 24 million to 500 million <laughs> annually in such a short time? <laughs> well, $24 was back in 1982. It is now 2021, which is some 39 years later. So I don't know how that comes to be a short period of time. Mm. It's most of my life, um, but it's just. Has it gone thing. quick to you though? Do you think it's? Does it feel as though they say time flies? But if no, it, not really. And that hasn't gone quick. No. I find I find things like like I, when I married Lee, which was 20 years ago. It, it seems like a different world before that because so much has happened. Everything is so eventful. I find my life is just full of things going on, full of events and and stuff. It's always changing. Mm. It's very exciting. I've got a, what a wonderful... Being in business is really, really fun. I think it's the biggest buzz forever. Beats any computer game going. <laughs> I do like playing computer games, but business is better. You got, you, what, what are the games you're playing at the moment, to anyone who knows? Video, uh, yeah, computer games. On, online, yeah. Not online, actually. The one I play most of the time is, is a game called Conquest, which is kind of like a risk game. Okay. Can anyone join that one or is that an open one? Or? Not, no, not that one. All right, so what we're going to do there is we're going to leave it there for tonight, guys. So thanks for the questions and comments. Now, Jim, I'll leave your decision for the Monopoly board. Which question or one would resonate with you to give away? Well, I, I like the question about Jim's Plus. Who was that? Well, that's a good one. I didn't yeah. think they would win, but that's all right. It's a good <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Michael, that's a great one there. So we'll give you that there. We'll take that there. <laughs> so well done, Michael. Good Look, job. Kids, guess what we're playing? <laughs> they won't play Monopoly with me because I'm too... <laughs> <laughs> so well done there. I had the same problem with my kids actually because I don't really like Monopoly very much. So I sat down and eventually agreed to have a play with them and I, and I, and I wiped the ball with them. I killed them all. They were making deals all over the place. And they said, Dad, you don't even like Monopoly. How can you win? <laughs> <laughs> I play by the rules. They don't like that. Well, send us a few photos. Of it, but thanks everyone who hanged around here tonight and asked some questions as well. We do this every training week. So if you want to check in probably around 14 times a year and say get out of the gym and ask anything you want, feel free to do so as well. So thanks everyone who watched the line. We had a lot of qu questions and comments and um, the replays are available on our YouTube channel as well. So thanks everyone and good luck with your businesses and we'll see you next time. Thank you.